Hello, everybody, and welcome to another hair-raising, fun-filled, expeditious episode of Radio Rama, where, as the name implies, I show you how to work on none other than radios, but sometimes other things too. But today, what do we have here? It says Tiffany Tone, and on the back it says Herbert H. Horn Radio Manufacturing, rather than. Rather, more properly, designed and engineered by Herbert H. Horn in Los Angeles. And that, to me, is a dead giveaway that this is probably not made by them. They were more properly, maybe they designed it. <clears throat> they may not have even designed it. This is almost certainly a Gefillin Brothers radio. It's got the same general characteristics I usually associate with Gefillin including this Inca brand transformer. It's also a Los Angeles brand. And uh, I think... I think there's a disc inside that spins and goes around this dial here. I don't know if it works or not. I'm going to bring it up slowly on the Variac because it's got a power transformer and if there's anything that's shorted on it we'll want to know so I'm going to start it off on the lowest amp setting and bring it up slowly now you see it's it's drawing a little bit but not much and let's see where our output voltage is bring it up at least to 50 percent again that's not really do anything um, let me check just to make sure there's any life in it uh, the pilot light is not lit but that could just be that the power the uh, pilot light is burned out it is drawing something so let's continue our adventure output voltage is still about 50 percent and it's not drawing much making noise I think it wants to pull in a station but that noise is probably bad filter capacitor so I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off because you can damage something in here if you have bad electrolytics which given the age of this which is I'm gonna determine it probably somewhere in the mid to late 30s they're bad they're definitely bad Probably someone's been in here at some point and replaced the electrolytics, but that was probably done so long ago that those two are bad. So I'm going to take the guts out and see what's going on inside. Definitely 30s. All the tubes in it are what we call big pin tubes, and that's very different than the base that came afterwards. The base that came afterward looks like this. These are called octal bases, and... These are much easier to install because they've got a key here. You just spin them until that keyway locks into place and you just push it down. But these, these older tubes, they did it a little bit differently. I can get this guy to come out. So you see it doesn't have a keyway. Instead it's got pins. And the pins are different sizes. So you would line them up with uh, you know the holes in the socket. But it's not as easy sometimes to gauge like I got it the first time, but some of these other tubes that'll have like, you know, six, seven pins. It's, it, you have to find the biggest pin, and they're so close in size to one another, it's, it's very easy to get confused. Now, let's take a look underneath. That's not an Inca transformer. What is that? Hadley Transformers. Still an L.A. company. I haven't, I haven't heard of that one. Um... No one's been in here ever. This is this is like 90-year-old electronics that have been untouched. It's like a time capsule. Not much going on here, but this, this is the original dry electrolytic capacitors, and it says it's 8 and 8 microfarads. I'm not sure if I can find a schematic for this guy, but <clears throat> these were probably red at some point, and they've faded into this yellow color 
These two, on the other hand, these are your grounds. And it looks like we have a floating ground here and then a chassis ground here. Hmm, well, hmm, hmm, I'm trying to think about this for a minute. It looks like that both positives go here to that location there. It says eight and eight microfarads. So my question is, all right, so never mind. So one of these probably has negative B plus on it. The negative B plus is probably going to chassis ground. The positive ground is going, positive B plus is up here. That goes to the field coil. So I've, <laughs> I hate shit like this. I've got a 50%. Well, never mind. I guess it doesn't matter. So if we have reference here. So as long as one goes here and one goes there, then we should be good. So never mind. Okay, the bare minimum has been done. I've replaced the two electrolytics. And so we can see if it's going to work. Let's go over here and turn our thing all the way back down. You want to make sure if you made a mistake that you catch it. Nah, it's behaving like it did before. It's just drawing like it should. So let's go ahead and bring it up. This is also an isolation transformer, so it keeps me safer from electric shock. Man, these controls are super freaking dirty. Plus, I've got hardly any antenna. It's like this little length of wire. So let me uh, reconnect it. All right, so I connected clip lead, my antenna wire. Got some dirty controls here, so let me clean these up a little bit. All right, let's try that again. a lot of dirt in these controls so let me try to clean them up some more I right, clean the crap out of the controls this is a really really dirty radio but it seems to be working all right one thing I want to do before I get too much further is I want to repair that speaker it's making a rattling noise, so I want to make sure it's not. I think it's just the tears that are in it, so let me glob those up with glue because I don't want to have to replace that speaker. That'd be annoying. So I downloaded the app. Okay, so I know it's gross, but what I use is a product called Lexel, L E X E L, and it's clear, but it stays kind of like rubbery after it dries because you, you know, the speaker's going to move around a lot. When I'm at home and when I'm cooking dinner, and of course, my husband. To relevant radio again, aren't you? They have so if I were to like put something like paper glue on that, that wouldn't flex. And what that would do is it'd make your speaker sound extremely tinny. So again, I use this stuff and I get it all over my fingers, but it's real good. I've even got parts of my truck held onto the body on the outside of it with this glue pretty freaking amazing but that's amazing all I did was replace two parts and it, it kind of works pretty well actually um, 
since the light is starting to fade out there and I've got a bunch of other radios to work on, I'm gonna try to clean up this cabinet. The radio's not worth enough to refinish, but I think I can at least improve that ratty appearance. All right, so here's the next stage of the process. I'm gonna try to salvage this cabinet. I'm not gonna be able to look at look, make it look perfect or maybe not even wonderful, but at least better. So I'm using this product that's been around for a million years called Old English. I don't know what it's made out of, but it works really well. But I just like generally, especially on something like this, this is this messed up, I'll douse it on there. I'm gonna get a paper towel, because this will ruin whatever rags that you have it's basically stained and uh, we're going to go in here and just kind of rub this in and you can see already like how much of an improvement that is in fact you know what like maybe i should retire from being a graphic designer become a spokesperson for old english i can be a i don't know maybe maybe not i don't know uh let's go over the rest of it with old english and again, you want to really douse this with Old English. And then we'll probably follow up with the beeswax to seal it up. All right, you can see what a big difference I made. I had to use a lot of Old English on this to kind of bring back the finish. I may even put another coat on it because, like, this is a really messed up cabinet. Um, I might choose to go over it with wax after that because I've got a cleaner wax. And also, I think I might be able to bring back some of this set's original sheen. You never know. All right, now it's time to use the wax. I'm gonna use a old fashioned paste carnauba wax. It's based out of a plant, probably in the tropics somewhere. And I'm gonna use my mechanical buffer. And what this is gonna do is actually a cleaner wax. So it'll clean up all the grime. Some people use Gojo, I use cleaner wax, but it's gonna remove like layers and layers and layers of disgusting grime. And we also are gonna probably bring back some of the original sheen that this cabinet had when it was new. All right, well this is after more time than I care to admit. This is probably about 45 minutes worth of buffing and waxing and getting the tired old finish back as close as I can to what it probably looked like from the 30s. Most furniture and uh, subsequently radio cabinets were pretty glossy back then. That was pretty popular. Right now I know that everything is all satin and like glossy is considered offensive because it shows fingerprints and everything. But no, back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, people wanted the glossy looking products. And so this is close to what it looked like before versus when it was completely dried out. I need to figure out a way how to get this escutcheon to stay in place because it seems like it wants to move around. So I'll probably use a little bit of glue on the inside to get that to just like stick. All right, next step that I usually take, and this is not necessary, is I tend to like dust off all the dust bunnies from the the chop of the chassis with a paintbrush, a very soft paintbrush. And then I take my handy denny battery leaf blower and blow the dust off. Granted, there's more clean to be done, but like I like to have a clean chassis before I start restoring the rest of it. Welcome to day two of working on the whatever brand this radio is supposed to be the herbert h horn radio and what i did before i called it a night was i cleaned up the chassis i know it's something you don't really have to do but i do it anyway another thing i'm gonna have to admit that happened is that while i was buffing this clear plastic out it's a little brittle and it cracked here and i was like shit because i thought maybe i've ruined it but all i did is i just loosened that screw up a little bit so that like it stops right there now the downside is that that means these indicators are going to be off a little bit I don't really think that matters a whole hell of a lot because I don't know that's just me um, so now that we've gotten the case handled which by the way that looks pretty good compared to what it did when I started it's time to start working on the electronics. And there's not much going on here. We already have the electrolytics replaced, but now we need to replace all these little paper capacitors and they are marked with their values. Somewhere on the sides, I love how it says dwarf tiger. 
I've seen this this brand before. Sometimes you have to, you know, get the crud off of them so you can see what value they are. This one's a little more obvious. Let's see. I mean, 20, 25 microfarads, and the working voltage is 200 volts, and the test voltage, which means maximum surge, is 600. I replace everything with 630 volt capacitors anyway. Um, so where, how many do we have in this thing? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight capacitors. So not a lot. Um, and then we have a number of resistors. The fact that the radio worked fine means I'm just going to leave the resistors alone. Who cares? And um, so you just what I do is I'll come in and I'll snip one end of one side of the old capacitor and leave that nice long lead there temporarily and I'll solder in one end of the new capacitor and then snip the other and solder in the second half of the new capacitor and that way you don't lose your space or you lose your place. It's very easy to do that. I got to be very careful because there's extremely fine delicate wiring all around this. I'm assuming that's probably some sort of IF transformer because I don't remember if I saw I don't really see it. There's, there's probably that's an IF right here at least I think it is and this is another one here and what's notable is that or it could be this one there does not seem to be any adjustments for these so you can't exactly come in here and do a you know, a tune-up. It's kind of a crude radio. But again, it works, so probably don't need to do that. And it's going to work probably even better. Um, these guys right here, these are made out of mica. They seldom, if ever, go bad. Some of them are starting to go bad. I take that back. But uh, let me get out my new capacitors and we'll do the replacements. Uh, All right, so I'm going to film me replacing a few of these. I haven't done this in a while, but some people ask, can you show us some of the basics? And so this is a 0 0.02 rated capacitor. I'm going to snip one end. You notice I'm leaving this kind of long because you see how long it needs to go. So I'll need to use some of that old lead. All right. So what I do is I make a little curl like that. Like a there's a thing called a pigtail or two that some people use. I've uh, never used it myself. I'm used to doing things this way. Then I get my Metcal soldering tip. And you want to make sure that uh, it's real good and hot and molten. You want to make sure it makes a real good connection. That's a big mistake that some people get in this hobby and who are new to it. They uh, will have excessively long leads. All right, we can cut that length of wire out of there and remove the capacitor and again we're going to make a little curly cue here in the end I'm not sure if that's a good word for that but whatever and then we're going to hook it here and then like make sure that they're mechanically bonded and then we're going to come in here again with the iron and you'll make sure it's real good and molten Sometimes you want to check just to make sure, you know, that it's... Sorry for knocking that with my hat. And uh, so forth. You just do all the caps like that. As you see, one end at a time. So you don't lose your place. Just take your time. All right. Okay, so all the capacitors are replaced. And uh, here's something that's kind of critical. It's not super critical, but it's... I think it's kind of important. It took me a while to figure this out. But, you know... Sometimes when you look at a lot of these capacitors that are going to chassis ground, you would think to yourself, well, why not I just find a more convenient place for that ground? I mean, it's chassis, all right, right? Well, the thing is, is when the engineers designed these chassis, um, they would move components around so that they wouldn't interfere necessarily with some of the, you know, the incoming signal. And so you can get some um, noise if you were to like move your capacitors around dramatically inside that chassis, especially if you're anywhere near any of the IF, uh, you know, generating areas. So I 
pretty much put the capacitors approximately as close as I can to where the originals went because um, it is overall like kind of a, a tuned circuit so you want to keep that circuit tuned as much as you can especially since this one does not have any adjustments to the uh, IF transformers I mean I really can't do an alignment on it it's not alignable so now that we've got all the capacitors replaced I'm going to do a test fire to see and make sure that it still works okay well it indeed works just fine to the bullpen in the 6th or the 7th inning. So now a lot of times we're seeing that in the 4th or the 5th. Non-profit that was helping feed people. It really smoked Okay. Security. For the authorities consider already... I like how it's weird. Like, the, the lights actually spin. They're like a, there's like this kinked up wiring here that I guess allows you to... That's really strange. You know what? There, here's an IF can here. It has adjustments on it. But it seems like it's pretty dang nice. It's pretty sensitive. It's actually very sensitive. I don't think I need to do a uh, alignment on it. It's fine. Um, so, now that we've weave it's not like there's more than one of me now that i've replaced all the capacitors and it works well the next thing i'm going to do is i think i'm going to replace the power cord it is original but you can see when i kind of do that it's cracking and you know whoever gets this from the museum um they could have it in their collection for decades and decades so that wiring is fine today but maybe in 5 10 15 years it'll be completely brittle so it needs to be replaced all right so I got my new cord installed here I put a little rubber grommet there so it's not gonna chafe you know if someone yanked on it real hard you wouldn't want them to, like cut the like, insulation on the cord um, last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an audio input it's real easy on these guys that have a power transformer and a hot chassis set you would not want to do what I'm about to suggest which is you can get your 3.5 millimeter stereo cable and just run it to the top and bottom of the bell amp control. It's real easy to determine on this one because the, I'm not sure if you can see that, it's hard to film, but the, the bottom of the volume control is going to chassis ground and the top is obviously this thing because it's going through this shielded cable that's then going through, let's see, that resistor, which is then going to this wire, which goes to the IF can. So that's where you expect the top of the volume control to be connected to, which is the top of the IF. And so our signal is going to interrupt that. There's going to be more impedance coming out of our Bluetooth, and it'll override radio, so we don't need a switch. And like I said, do not, do not do this on a hot chassis or even a floating chassis set because um, you're not isolated. You don't have a power transformer. On a hot chassis and a floating chassis set, you need an isolation transformer in before the audio, before it gets to the set, absolutely. Okay, so now we have the audio input installed. We have another rubber grommet here. And we put our right and left channels together, so we get mono, and then we go to the chassis ground for the negative. So we'll plug in my Bluetooth and see how that works. All right, so that worked pretty well. We got our Bluetooth running in. And we can control the volume either by the phone or by the radio. So it's relatively low now on my phone. Not bad sounding. Anyway, I'm gonna do a few more things. I need to lubricate the uh, tuning mechanism because I wanna make sure that um, that's going to move freely since it's a weird friction fitting. I wanna make sure that's not gonna slip. Okay, last thing I wanna do is come in here and oil the bearings on the tuning condenser. There's some ball bearings in the front. And then there's a kind of like a, just a regular bearing in the back. That's really they're all all there is to that as far as anything that moves. We want everything to move as easily as possible so that this friction wheel doesn't have to work too hard. That's already much better. We're also going to put a little bit of lubricant or oil 
the back of this thing. The you do not want to get any on that friction surface, so then it won't it will continue. It'll not be frictionable anymore. All right. Oh yeah, that's uh, ten thousand times better. Well, maybe not ten thousand times better, but it's it's much better than it was. Um, so, next thing, I want to clean up these grimy knobs, and I tend to use a little bit of warm water and some ammonia, and that will dissolve all the old crap, and then we'll need to use some, maybe some oils and waxes to get the shine back. Alright, so, you can see already that the water has gotten brown. I just did this, and you can see all that you know, 90 years of crap is coming off those knobs. I find it's much easier to get into fine little nooks and crannies like that. Anyway, put those aside. The next thing I want to do is I, I think there's a few cracks in the wood or in some of the joints. I want to make sure that those are tight and if they're not, I'll glue them up. All right, well, indeed, some of the joints have come loose and it's interesting because it looks like it's actually nailed and glued together and it's just the bottoms come loose a little bit. So I'm going to just Put some wood glue in both sides and I might even go over the top a little bit. The top looks like it's in pretty good shape but sometimes I'll just put glue in the cracks to make sure it's going to stay tight. It's a very crude cabinet but so I'll put the glue in there and I'll hammer it back together again and that'll uh, take care of that. Okay so I've glued and re-nailed the bottom and I also kind of got glue in all the cracks that we're showing here. I'm possibly going to be shipping this radio, so it needs to be really solid. So now we can put the chassis back in. And uh, the knobs, I just took them out and uh, cleaned them off, but they've lost all of their sheen. And so my cheap and dirty way to make them look better is I... <laughs> I don't know why, but I found like the shiny tire spray, that foam tire spray, that really like rejuvenates, like it'll bring back the luster to those knobs. So I'm going to let those sit and marinate in that for a little while. Meanwhile, I'm going to put the chassis back in and uh, let it run for a while. The heat will also help the glue cure, so I'm in a hurry. I just wanted to point out something else that's interesting, is that this is a brand of shield that I've seen many times, a GOAT brand shields, and uh, just reminded me of something. I don't know about other places in the world right now but for some reason in America the word goat is now being used a lot I'm not sure what it's supposed to mean either it's like man that that woman is goat or like that truck is goat anyway I mean, I'm just getting too old and I can't keep up with modern lingo but whatever I'm gonna put this back in the cabinet and then we're gonna take care of those knobs you know what like I'm kind of tickled as punch with how this turned out that dial looks freaking amazing it doesn't sound too bad really um, and the finish which was I thought roasted looks pretty good I mean yeah it's pretty worn it's a little tired looking but it's okay if I was 90 years old I'd probably look a little tired too but anyway this thing is um, I think gonna make someone very happy in the future but thanks so much for watching and until the next time a radio comes across my workbench I'll see you guys next time